discussion tonight. He's uh, you know, opening discussions and he is going to give us a 1,000 feet view of prayer is the key. And after that, I ask all our other ministers, all our other speakers to get ready so that right after Father Tony's um, opening um, exhortation, we will continue with the discussions. Father Tony, you have the microphone. Thank you very much. Good evening to all of us. Uh, I will just uh, give us a little on prayer and then we launch into the discussion. Uh, I am not an expert in prayer. I am a learner at the feet of the Lord and I continue to depend on him. And I just share my own experience, a little experience of prayer with you and my understanding of prayer. I would like to begin by reading from the text of the gospel of today. You remember today is the feast of Our Lady or the memorial of Our Lady of Sorrows. And just celebrating it after the exaltation of the cross because Our Lady stood at the foot of the cross beside the Lord. So I would like to read from John's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and his disciples, his disciples there, whom he loved, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Dear brothers and sisters, in the act of creation, God calls every human being from nothingness into existence. He made us in his own image and likeness. Thus crowned with glory and honor of the image of God, human beings after the angels are capable of knowing and acknowledging how majestic is the name of the Lord in all the earth. Even after losing the likeness of God through sin, humans still remain the image of the creator and retain the desire for the one who calls us to existence. The search for God is evidence in all religions of the world. If we go to the book of Joel, chapter three, verses one to five there, we hear what God said, I'll pour my spirit on all mankind and all the rest of the words that follow. Quoting from the Catholic Catechism of the Catholic, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 2567, man may forget his creator or hide from his face, he may run after idols and accuse the deity of having abandoned him. Yes, the living and true God tirelessly calls each person to that mysterious encounter known as prayer. In prayer, the faithful, the faithful God's initiative of love always comes first. Our own first step is always a response. Here the church gives us the reason why we pray. It is basically search for God in response to his love for us. Prayer is an encounter of love with God, a moment of intimacy with him. He initiates the encounter and prompts humanity to respond to his invitation. When we respond positively, the encounter is always fulfilling, satisfying, and nourishing. It is not so much a fulfillment of myriads of petitions, and, and, but an in-depth satisfaction from the confidence that one is loved and cared for. The joy of feeling and enjoying the presence of God. 
So prayer for me is that moment of in invitation by God to an in-depth enjoyment of his satisfying presence. When I am with him, all other things count less. When I spend time with him, he unravels the confusion, the confusing stuff about life. He clears my doubts, douses my fears, and gives me inner confidence. Prayer is the assurance of God's presence and love. Today, dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate the memorial of Our Lady of Sorrows. It is a memorial of our beloved Mother Mary and all the sorrows she had to bear in life, beginning from the Annunciation of Christ's birth to his burial. I would like to single out a moment within this period, and that is our Mother Mary at the foot of the cross of our Lord. There she stood in tears and pain, quietly broken and devastated, witnessing the massive flow of blood from her son, seeking for meaning between human wickedness and the will of God, yet quietly and confidently entrusting all she went through into the understanding presence of God. Though there were many other moments of prayer in her life, I choose to identify with her at the foot of the cross because there have been many times words have made no meaning to me in prayer. There have been times tears and silence have communicated more loudly and clearly and meaningfully than words could offer me. With her at the foot of the cross, I feel the assuring presence of God. I feel his touch and I find in-depth satisfaction that he is there with me. I want to thank God for my brother, Patrick. Brother Patrick, through whom God has, of, through whom God has passed to make us in this group aware of the invitation to intimacy with him. He has through his words of exhortation and encouragement opened us to the loving presence of God and helped us to enjoy the satisfaction that offers. As I say this, I remember Moses during the battle of the Amalekites with the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 17. There we are told that Moses in the course of this prayer, in the course of this battle, told Joshua to go on and fight the Amalekites while he will stay on the mountain and raise his hands and pray. And we are told that when Moses raised his hands, his staff, and prayed, the children of Israel won the battle. And whenever he grew weary and dropped his hand, the Amalekites won. And so the others who were with him, Aaron and all, had to help to raise his hand up, give him stone to sit on and raise his staff up and supported the, supported the hand so that the Israelites would win the battle. Patrick needs us to hold his hands in prayer so that we can, we can continue to feel the assuring presence of God by his ministration. And so I call on every one of us, as we share today, to also remember in my prayers, remember not only him, but all the priests. We need you. Sometimes we get weak. As the prophet Zachariah, Zachariah says, strike the prophets and the sheep will scatter. So we need you, we need your support, we need your own prayer so that we can remain steadfast, we can remain faithful. Sometimes we, your priests, get tired of praying. Sometimes we get so caught up in activities that we cannot pray. Sometimes we are just tired, but we still have to move on. At those moments, your prayers carry us on. So as we pray for Patrick, pray for every one of us, we battle with our own weaknesses too. Somebody, 
the Catechism of the Catholic Church also identifies prayer as a battle. Amen. So we ask you to journey with us and battle with us so that we can overcome our weaknesses, our struggle on to pray and keep you going. So I want to leave it there. And I know that you have a lot of things to ask about the kinds of prayer, but I've only chosen one aspect of it, staying at the foot of the cross. So you can ask questions, then we can now expand to other parts of prayer and attend to some of the challenges you face in the course of praying too. Thank you very Amen. much. Thank you so much, Father Tony Bassi. Um, as you heard Father say, get your questions ready. We are just scratching the surface. As you ask your questions, we will all come away from here empowered about how, when, where, you know, what to pray about. I'd like to invite the other discussants to please weigh in as I um, bring Father Edward Obi to the microphone. Father Edward, if you would please unmute your microphone. Hello there. Good evening from Nigeria. Uh, it's such a great pleasure to be seeing all of my brothers there and um, the rest of you who have uh, kind of chimed in. Uh, the subject matter of prayer is always uh, a daunting experience for me. Um, yeah, like Tony, I am a learner as well. I am um, a student at the foot of the cross, a student of prayer. And I believe that I will remain a student until I go down six feet. But being a student in this matter uh, is, is daunting to some extent, but, but, but it's also pleasurable. Pleasurable in the sense that you don't have to ask or you don't have to answer all the questions. It seems like the one who poses the questions also somehow gives you some expo to the, to the, to the answers of, to, of these questions. If you are walking side by side or sitting side by side with the Lord in prayer, then those daunting things, those um, moments of dryness or those moments of distraction that come very frequently are also amazingly handled by the one who is the leader in prayer, namely the Lord himself. So I go to prayer a bit um, nervy, but again and again, I get the assurance to calm down, to calm down. Don't worry, it's all right. This is my experience of prayer with the Lord. Sometimes I even fall asleep, but I fall asleep knowing that I'm sleeping in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes I lack words to use, but the one who accompanies me in prayer somehow understands even my unspoken words. This is my personal experience. I mean, as many people as they are would have their own experiences, but I think that this experience makes prayer attractive for me because it's not really about me. It's Amen. about the one that I am addressing. Thank you. Prayer is not about us. It's the one we are addressing and we have to come to God, you know, comfortably knowing that we're coming to our father. Um, father yeah. Michael Appen, would you like to weigh in? Um, kindly unmute your microphone. We can't hear you. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, dear friends in Christ. Good evening from here, from Sweden. <laughs> I think I'm the closest person to... Uh, no, I'm not the closest person to Father, Father Maximus Patrick is now. I think Father Maximus is the closest to Father Patrick right now in <laughs> terms of distance. So good evening from here. And thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. I would just only um, add my voice to my brother's voice uh, voices about prayer. Just like uh, my, two, my two brothers, uh, my elder brothers, I am also a student of prayer. And for me, 
um, prayer is a journey with God. It's a journey with God. And so it, what always comes to my mind is the journey of the disciples to Emmaus. You know, journeying and confused sometimes and wondering what the future holds, wondering uh, what has happened. But in the midst of that confusion, in the midst of that journey, Jesus walks with them and communicates with them and comforts them. And at the end of the day, he reveals himself to them. So prayer, a journey with Jesus, leads me much closer to him. And just like the theme of today says, prayer is the key, prayer is the master key. It is such a great, uh, you know, a great topic. And sometimes when I ask myself, okay, prayer is the key, I go back to the life of Jesus himself. He started with prayer and ended with prayer. But one thing that touches me about prayer is that looking at Jesus, he could do everything, but always found time to pray. At every point, every important point of his life, at the beginning of his ministry, he prayed, even before choosing his own disciples. Before he suffered, he prayed. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, we are told that Jesus prayed so much that his sweat became like blood. It came out as blood. This is the example of Jesus making prayer as at every point of his life, at every start of it, something very important. It was marked by prayer. And then prayer does not mean that God will always do what we want him to do. But prayer helps us to journey with God. Prayer makes us to come closer to God. Prayer helps us to accept the will of God. And when Jesus prayed, for example, Father, take this cup away from me, if it is your will. Let it not be my will, but your own will. <clears throat> so when I see in my own life, when I say that my, uh, my experience of prayer is more of a journey, it is to say that it is not all that I want. It is not all that I, I, I want for myself that always happens. But what makes prayer interesting and attractive to me is just the fact that I'm journeying with Jesus, even on the rough road. Amen. He holds my hands. Amen. He tells me, come, move on. I am with you always to the end of time. So it is a journey of companionship with mm. Jesus. Thank you so much, you. Father Michael. Thank you so much. It's a journey of companionship with Jesus. We're supposed to make it our own Emmaus experience. It should be our Emmaus journey with Jesus right there beside us. And it should not be about what we want, but his will. Father Stephen Ojapa. All right. Um, good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning, depending on which part of the world you are in. I'm so excited to see my brother priests here and all the great people of God who are joining here. And congratulations once again and happy birthday to my dean, my formator, 
my counselor, <laughs> Father Patrick, they took so much. He means so many things to so many of us, especially those of us who are younger and who have formed. Not to elder elder statement like like Father Edward, his ancestors in the Lord, uh, but to Father Patrick, he is also a very big brother. You are happy birthday, Father Patrick, and all my brothers. Um, good evening once again. I just have a little story to share, and you know that for me, for for the rest of my life, I will always have a cause to make to my kidnapping incidents, um, not just kidnapping incidents in the hands of normal people, but in the hands of the most dreaded group that um, every, 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 everybody in Nigeria dreads. And today we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Soros. And talking about the Soros of Our Lady, um, Father Tony Barson began with that beautiful expression of the Our Lady's soul. And I just wonder the kind of prayer Our Lady would have been praying beneath the cross of Jesus. Uh, what category of prayer would that kind of prayer be? What was she saying beneath the crucifix? What was her request beneath the crucifix? What exactly was, was going on in her heart beneath the crucifix of Jesus, watching her son hang? What words could she possibly the same. And for me, coming from the kidnapping experience, I think if there was one word that would be so loud in the, in the expression of Our Lady would be tears, tears. And I discovered the power of tears. Um, I have said all kinds of prayers before. I've said the breviary, I've said divine, art, divine office, sissies, I've had Eucharistic adoration, I've celebrated the Mass, but I've never had cause to pray with my tears. But uh, for 33 days, I discovered another form of prayer, tears. Tears summarizes in deeper sense, in a real, real deeper sense, you know, another form of communication with the Lord. And that was something that was really, because the, 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 the most part of my journey in staying with the bandits, I discovered that words were not sufficient to express what I want to tell God. And as I sit down to contemplate all that I could tell God was, God, look at my tears. And I remember very vividly my our last days before we left the kidnappers, uh, when everybody, my, the colleagues that were with me there became very sick. Um, Hassan, Father Oliver, Omid, they were all sick. And I looked at them. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to pray. But looked, God looked at my tears because those, those were all I could do. I could just, just cry. And I cried in such a way that I felt God saw the cry. And so for me, growing in intimacy with God is another form of prayer in such a way that we also need to let God see our tears. You know, in Africa, people say men don't cry. Even when we have genuine reasons to cry, it's like to cry is forbidden. But I think as human beings also, we need to learn to pray with our tears because that too is another form of a powerful means of prayer and communication to God. Happy birthday once again to Father Patrick, and good evening to everybody. Amen. We need to be vulnerable when we come before the Lord. We need to come as we are. If you are sad and you're going to be crying in your closet, cry in his presence. Be vulnerable because he's your father. Um, Father Maximus is going to join us in a minute, in a little bit. I'd like to ask um, our participants to please go ahead and post your questions in the chat area. Go ahead and start posting your questions about prayer. What is it that you've always wanted to know about prayer? We have a house full of anointing, anointed, powerful men of God to answer your questions. 
Uh, let me see the first person to type in the chat area your questions about prayer. Amen. It's quiet around here. So let me unmute everybody so that we can be sure that we're in the right party. So now we're able to unmute. If you know that you have come here to celebrate our Lord, to celebrate the ninth month of the year, if you are a living soul and you're here to celebrate God's goodness in the life of our chaplain, let me hear a resounding hallelujah. You are able to unmute your microphone. Shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. Now we're talking. Can I hear that hallelujah to the most high God with a volume that heaven can hear? Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So because I know you can shout hallelujah, your living soul, get your fingers to the keyboard and let me see you begin to type your questions. I see there's a Father Victor with us. Am I correct? If I'm correct, can you please go? Oh, hallelujah. That's my brother. Um, let me add him. So let's hear from. Father Victor, let's have your contribution to prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. What would you have to share for us with us today? Kindly unmute. We don't have the anointing to hear you behind a muted microphone. I can see you're journeying with the Lord in your car. Go ahead and unmute. Thank you. Father Victor, please. Yeah, first and foremost, I, I want to thank all of you for giving me the opportunity to join um, this meeting today. And of course, to celebrate our very own brother, you know, Father Patrick Etu, our elder brother, you know, our formator, our counselor, you know, it's a privilege. Um, of course, part of the things I, I, I would like to share is um, about Father Patrick Etu. Um, he is the man of prayer himself. You know, while in the seminary, many of us looked up to him, you know, his style of prayer, a very simple man, just like Jesus himself, simple in his approach towards prayers. And of course, Jesus found every opportunity to, to pray and to teach the people of God. And for me, prayer is the lifting up of our heart and mind to God, like the simple catechism would, would tell us. And... Prayer ought to be our entire life. Our whole life ought to be prayers. And that is why Jesus, you know, will say that we should pray without season. We should pray in season and out of season. And Father Patrick is a man of prayer. And I'm glad to be associated with him and with this group today. So it is my prayer that Jesus himself, who is the chief shepherd of his flock, will continue to bless and strengthen him and continue to help us to pray well and pray better. Amen. 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 Jesus, the shepherd, will help us to pray well, pray better. Father Maximus, are you in the house? Amen. Yeah. I can I'm see here. your smile and now I can hear your voice. Talk to us about prayer. Talk to us about prayer, the master key. Amen. Uh, can we really talk about prayer? Because uh, prayer is something much deeper than we can even express in words. From a personal point of view, I think prayer is everything about our life. Prayer is, it goes beyond even the words that we may even be saying to God. And I will key into the experience that Father Stephen Ochapa shared with us. He talked about praying with tears. And that's what I will say, that prayer is not just about our words to God. It goes beyond that. 
prayer is a communication that is deeper than our own being. As you all would know, or you all know, that uh, every human being is made up of a spirit, and God himself is spirit. So human beings are spirit who have bodies. And so that spirit aspect, that's that spiritual aspect of a human being, makes it easier for us to pray and commune with the absolute spirit, God himself. And so that's why I say prayer is just something beyond words. It should flow from the heart. It should flow, flow from the spirit. It should flow, flow from our minds. And that's how I see prayer. Everybody has its own perspective of prayer, depending on how it affects the individual. Personally, I see prayer as a time of inspiration, a time when things that are hidden are made known to me. Personally, I see prayer as a time when uh, difficulties and uh, questions that clouds our minds are being answered. More light is being shed on the enigmas of our lives. That is the point of prayer. That is prayer. And so it will be difficult for me to say prayer is this, prayer is that, prayer is this, because it flows from the being of a human being. And so I pray that as we celebrate our brother, my fellow rector, <laughs> you understand why I'm saying fellow rector. As we celebrate with him today, it is my prayer that uh, God will keep on helping us with his spirit because it is his spirit that moves us to cry, Abba, Father. It is his spirit that moves us to pray. Well, without the spirit of God, no one can pray. That I will conclude. Let the spirit of God keep on guiding us to pray well and to answer his call and to do what his will, uh, 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 his will wants for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Maximus. And so I invite us again to the chat area to post your questions. What is that question you have nursed in your heart about prayer? What are the challenges you face when you, you know, come to God in prayer? The pool has been stirred. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and more men of God in the house. I'd like to, Reverend Sister Obinokpala, prayer is also a way of life, meaning that we have to live out what we pray. And so our sister is encouraging us to live out what we pray. We must not just send words up to God. We must live a life inspired by our prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. So question from Sister Henrietta, is our prayer relevant in the eyes of God? If Where are they typing it? Hello, if in the chat area, you type your questions in the chat area. Is our Mine is there. Okay, I'll look at, there's a list I'm looking down. I see that the, the question was sent directly to, to my post account. So um, let me read this question. Is our prayer relevant in the eyes of God when we use other people's prayers? For example, when we pray the prayers of the saints, um, I'll ask anyone to weigh in. Anyone is free to respond. When we pray, you know, formula prayers, prayers of the saints, are they relevant in the eyes of God. Thank you. Um, Lucia. Yes. Sir. Uh, uh, Dr. P, let me just weigh in um, very briefly because here in Nigeria, diesel is very, very expensive and lights may go off any time now. So let me quickly weigh in on this. Yes, um, whether our prayers are relevant when we, we use other people's prayers like the saints and all that. You know, each saint is a believer 
must be a Christian and have lived our life, the same kind of life that we have lived. So when they pray, they pray from out of their experience, which is not completely different, which is not completely separated from our experience, since they also shared our human nature. So their expressions in prayer will always remain like the experiences that we have had. So when we use their prayers, when we pray in their words, our prayers align with their prayers. And because they are saints who have been received by God, accepted by God, I believe that uh, using their words to pray is a magnificent way of aligning ourselves with their experience. I'm hoping that our experiences also will be akin to theirs and lead us in the same pathway that they themselves have followed. So I pray uh, using the prayers of saints quite a lot because sometimes I'm not able to formulate my own prayers at that moment. So I find opening a prayer book and saying, the prayers that have been said by a holy person in the past, a saint, that, that helps me to somehow imbibe their spirit and follow their footsteps. So yes, I would say um, the prayers of others who have gone ahead of us, marked with a sign of faith, are very relevant and really quite important. Amen. Thank you so much. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? When we pray formula prayers, when we pray um, the prayers of the saints, is it relevant? Does it um, help our prayer life? Anybody else want to weigh in? Yeah, this is Sister Stella. I wanted to add to that, follow up on what Father just said. Okay. And um, it's a reminder that the Psalms, the entire scripture is really not our own. It's inspired, but they are all prayers the entire book of the Psalms and the scriptures. So they really are also uh, in a way formula prayer in as much as we didn't come up with them or they are not our, of our own making. And our scripture says also, you know, the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf in the same way that we, we, when we use the Psalms, we pray with the scriptures, they are all you know, written prayers, formula prayers that we did not make up ourselves. So yes, I would say, following up on what Father said, formula prayers are very relevant in our lives when we use them. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. That was Reverend Sister um, Stella and Um, So a follow-up question. Somebody says, why do we read our prayers during, you know, uh, um, our Catholic programs, our Catholic spiritual uh, um, practices? Um, shouldn't prayer be something that is from our innermost feelings? Um, anybody want to weigh in on that? I think I would like to say something concerning that. And it's just uh, the, the, it has been answered already. What Sister said is very, very important. Just what I want to add is the fact that don't forget that Jesus also prayed the Psalms too. You know, he used prayers that would seem at that time as formula. Like on the cross, when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That is, that comes straight away from the Psalm. I think it's Psalm 21 or Psalm 22. I mean, it comes straight away from the Psalms. So Jesus himself um, availed himself of the rich prayer tradition that he himself had from uh, the Jewish tradition. So it's important. Um, this few days, the past one week or so, we've been uh, looking at prayers in the scripture, prayers that some very efficacious prayer that we find in the scripture. And we know that human, we human beings, we learn by imitating, by doing, following, looking at what others have done. And um, <clears throat> we follow and we also get results by doing that, you know. So I think it's 
really important if we um, look at deep, uh, dig deep into our own uh, traditions as well, the sense and the sense of old, like, you know, David, who is being accredited with many of the Psalms of the scripture, it's one of the sense that we, we know. The entire so, scripture, we didn't write the scripture. Yeah, yeah, so right. we find so many prayers in the scripture. If, if you read Pauline letters, you see so many prayers that we can actually make our own. But one thing I also want to add is that let us not just recite them, but let's try to understand what those prayers are about and apply them in our own circumstances. Now, when we reflect on them and apply them on our, in our own circumstance, in our own situation, appropriate them, claim them, if I want to use the word Amen. that our, 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 our brothers often use, brothers and sisters use, claim it for yourself, then it becomes your own becomes your own prayer, just like our Lord Jesus said, my, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know, a verse of a psalm that became his own at that point in time, became so relevant and so touching in the circumstance that he found himself. Thank you so much, Father. So make the prayer your own. Bring it, you know, to bear in your own circumstance. Somebody is asking, when we pray and we have several points, prayer points, does it matter? if we bring all of them together at the same time, or should we focus one at a time? Who would like to say something about that um, among our panelists? Should we bring our intentions one by one, or can we bring them all together? Does it matter? Please remember to unmute uh, yourself. Thank you for okay. that. Okay. Well, I'm just um, I'm just wondering because when we talk about bringing one one at a time, you know, when when you have so much in your heart and you are coming with all your heart before God, um, it doesn't matter how how much is um, you have uh, the kind of the number of intentions that you have. The most important thing for me is to lay your heart open before God. Prayer is not about uh, how logical your intentions are and the, you know, the, the scale of preference. No, that is not uh, what prayer is all about. Prayer is about opening our hearts and, you know, laying our our whole self before God. So if I think that even if you have uh, 100 intentions, you may not necessarily have to mention all of them, but you know, God knows our hearts. So the most important thing is to let every, let our hearts out before God. And just like our brother shared so uh, that touching experience of tears, some of the intentions that you have may come out, uh, you know, may, may come out in terms of tears. Some may come in terms of deep breath. Some may come in, in form of the pains that are in our heart. So, or even the joys in our heart. So it, uh, for me, I don't think we should begin to put it in terms of uh, preference or, or uh, logic. So. Amen. Thank you, Father. Somebody is asking, when um, is there a special method of praying to avoid distracting thoughts in the middle of deep prayers? Is there a way that we should be praying so that we will not be experiencing distractions? What is your recommendation? Well, um, you know, sometimes we when we get into prayer and along the line, just like the person said, certain things come up, other thoughts begin to come in. You know, sometimes you can control the thoughts and sometimes you're unable to control the thoughts. And so distractions, yes, they do come in. So the best thing is to pray with the distraction, you know, because uh, distractions could be very stubborn. You want to let go of them, they come in another form. You know, like a child that is crawling, you drag the child and it comes in another way. So it's better you pray with it. It's better we pray with the distractions. Personally, 
I, I pray with distractions when they come. And I remember uh, when we learned how to pray in the seminary, we also had, learned, had to learn how to pray with distraction. And how we pray with distraction, you know, I will use a very simple way that I, maybe I'll present a very simple way, like when I'm talking to children, maybe you're praying and remember that mommy is cooking rice, you know, and you just remember that she's cooking rice and you start thinking about which portion of meat, maybe which part of the chicken is going to be given to you in the course of that rice. And before you realize you derail and start thinking about the rice, how you are going to eat it, you know. So what to do at that time, you know, what I would do would be to thank God for the gift of rice, to thank God for my mom and to thank God for food and the desire he has given me to be able to eat food. And I pray that you bless my mom as she cooks the food so that it will be delicious. And then I come back to pray. So I've used the, the desire for rice and the reminder to pray. I've prayed for my mom. I've prayed to thank God for the food. I've prayed to be able to eat. And then I come back and continue with what I was praying. So that could be a way of praying with distraction. Maybe in the course of praying, you remember someone who annoyed you and you begin to feel angry. So that could be a moment to pray for that person. Thank God for the gift of that person. Pray about what happened and commit a person to God and ask for strength to be able to forgive the person, you know, so that, uh, that God may also assist you and assist that person that you may build a better relationship. And then you continue with your prayer. So you have diverted there, prayed about it, and then you continue with your prayer. So it's like pick, wow. pick up the distraction, pray along with it, and then join you on. Amen. Wow. The distraction Wonderful. could be a leading. You know, your distraction could be a leading. It could be God, you know, directing you to the things in your life that you need to bring, um, present to God. Thank you so much. Father Maximus, your hand is up. Yeah. I, I've, I wanted to just uh, chip in something concerning the the several numerous petitions. Uh, the question that was asked concerning numerous petitions, whether to present all before God, whether to say it all. I can't really quite remember how the question was. The question was, do we but take it we, one we, by we, one, focus one by one, or could we bring okay. all our petitions at once to God? Something that can help us. When that question came forth, I remember the text of the of the scripture that says in Psalm 139, verse 1 to verse 4 of that part of that scripture. It says, the Lord, you have examined me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You discern my thoughts from afar. You observe my activities and times of rest. You are familiar with all my ways. Now take note of this, verse four. Before a word is formed in my mouth, you know it entirely, O oh Lord. So, and that is where I want to hitch my, my explanation. And uh, throwing the line of Father Michael, uh, Father Michael, you don't need to mention everything. All what you know you need to do is to that communication with God, that relationship with God at prayer. God knows your intentions. God knows everything, even before you think it. So I, I think it doesn't matter whether you mention it Maybe for emphasis, you may mention it, that God knows everything. Amen. God knows everything. And that scripture was powerful. He already knows the words before you form it. Somebody is asking, um, how do we get our faith going? When we have prayed so much about something and we have not gotten our desired results, or we feel like we have not heard from God about the matter. Yeah, well, I think maybe I can add up to that. I think, um, you know, going back to what I said at the beginning, that prayer is more like being with God, enjoying his presence, and then trusting that he knows what we want. You know, it's not so much answer to our various petitions. God knows what is best for us and the best time to give us what we want. We might be anxious and want, want uh, our petitions answered immediately, 
God may see that answering these petitions immediately might not be the best for us. He might actually use those petitions to attend to someone else and then keep us around him or keep himself around us so that we enjoy his presence. We are, we, that continual prayer helps to assure us of the presence of God around us. So I think if we take our minds off the fact that we want uh, things answered the way we present them to the fact that we should just enjoy that relationship, that communication, that loving presence and assuring presence of God, I think that will make more meaning than focusing on whether the petitions are answered or not. Sometimes he might just want us to be with him at the foot of the cross. Carry the petitions, carry the prayers on your head. Let them be loaded, but don't burden them to me and stay there with me. Just enjoy being with me in those crosses that you may be carrying. I have experienced that I have prayed for so many things and cried about, and they still remain. The crosses still linger, as our late Father Otoide would sing. And then at such moment, all I do is just to remain there. Ask him, I know you understand, but you also understand I'm human. That's why I cry. That's why I present them to you. So since you know what is best, let your will be done and at your own time. So I only pray for strength. Remember the text of the scripture, those who wait on the Lord shall have their strength renewed so that they can continue waiting. That is it. That is it. Thank you, Father. Um, anybody else wants to weigh in? Father just reminded us the Lord wants us to commune with him. So whether our prayers in our own understanding seem answered or not, he wants us to be in his presence. Anybody else wants to weigh in? Um, any of the panelists? Um, somebody here says, each morning when I wake up, sometimes I don't know where to begin my morning prayer before heading to work. You know, if, if I say the divine mercy, or any other formula prayer, is that enough? Amen. Who would like to weigh in? Is it enough to just say the divine mercy or one, for, you know, versus feeling like, oh, I have a prayer time. I am, you know, having a quiet time before going to work. Please. Yeah, I, I, think, I think quiet time is good. It's okay. Uh, having prayer time is nice, but then, you know, uh, I, I would like to use an ordinary experience, you know, when, when we wake up, the first person we see, we greet good morning, you know, a child sees an elder and greets good morning, you ask the child, how are you, did you sleep well, that's what we do with our friends, so if we wake up to, I think the best thing would be to also uh, thank God, at least acknowledge the fact that he is the one that has given us life, you know, and acknowledge him in that sense, and also ask him, how are you? Tell him how we are and ask for strength as we go into the day. So I think that's just the normal way of living, greeting a friend. So let's just make it that way rather than look at, looking at formulas, just greet a friend. And then maybe in the course of either tra uh, driving or in the train or in the bus or in the plane, then we can now begin to pray either the rosary or practice quiet time or do the divine mercy. But at least once we wake up, the first thing will be to greet him and to acknowledge his kindness for helping us to be awake. I think that will be the best thing to do. Amen. Somebody, amen. Somebody's um, asking about um, praying in tongues. As the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit helps us to pray when our words fails us. The person wants to know more about praying in tongues. Patrick, you want to say something about that? <laughs> yeah. Um, praying in tongues is mentioned as uh, one of the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I think Paul also speaks about it as saying that he who prays in tongues edifies him, edifies himself, views of himself, views of the spirit. <clears throat> so it's important to understand that it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, some people, when they are under that, uh, maybe that influence, that power of the Holy Spirit, you know, they, be, they began to um, um, utter some words that 
might not really be intelligible to them, but they know that it's doing something really deep uh, in in them. So the the phenomenon of praying in tongue is still for me a mystery. Many people have said a lot of things about it, maybe based on their own experience. Um, what I would rather say is that as important as it is, that particular gift of the spirit, um, let us not make it look as if if someone, this the person who prays in tongue is more special than someone who does not pray in, in tongues. You know, let us always see those kind of gifts, those kind of disposition towards prayer as often is God's um, gift. One of the things that Paul tells us that we should really aspire to is love. In fact, he also tells us that we should desire that we should prophesy. That is knowing God's will and being able to tell um, God's will. So, yeah, as important as it is, it's not uh, something that we should lose sleep over if we discover that that's not maybe the kind of prayer that we are called to. Some people believe that everybody is supposed to pray in tongues, but I don't I don't share in that because I know that there are so many people who have prayed and have gotten um, responses to their prayers and they didn't really have to have to pray in, in tongues. If God has given you that particular gift, maybe when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, it's okay. Use it. I mean, one use it to build himself up. It can also be an opening for other uh, charisms, other gifts that God will bestow uh, on, on us. But I'd rather that we even <laughs> learn the basics of trying to, I mean, of praying, of communicating with God. And one thing I would also like to add is the fact that, you know, as we've been discussing, most of what we're actually saying is what we do. But it's also important to emphasize the other dimension. The other dimension, that the fact that when we come to pray, it's not just about what we are doing but what God is also doing in us is an essential part of the prayer. And that is why sometimes silence in the presence of God means a great deal. It's very, very important. Being silent before God. I mean, he does his work in us. You know, like the psalmist says, in the secret of my heart, he teaches me wisdom. There's a lot of healing that he does in us when we come into his presence. You know, prayer is not just one-way traffic. We we talk to God and he talks to us. You know, there are many, many things that he does to us when we are in his presence. You know, there are many, many things that he communicates to our spirits, you know, which we may not even hear with our natural ear. But there are so many things that he tells us in our spirits. And it's, it's only when we begin to act, when we begin to relate with others, that those things come to, maybe come as insight and and all that. So I think those ones are also very important when we are uh, speaking of prayers. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you so much, Father. At this time, we're going to um, transition into a time of prayers. Let us pray for our, for our needs. We've learned about prayer. We've heard about prayer. Let us take time to pray for our needs. I'll ask Father Tony Bassi to please lead in a time of prayer for everyone that is present, for our families. And for those who are celebrating a birthday or um, anniversary in the month of September, we'll do that and then we'll quickly transition to the other part of our program, celebrating Father Patrick. Father Bassi, please lead us in uh, general intercessory prayers. Thank you. Um, Father, uh, Father Victor, if you're still there, please unmute so that you can join Father um, Bassi in this time of intercessory prayer, blessing the people. I will praise him. I will praise him. I will praise him forevermore. 